Hello and good evening, everyone. We're going to take a long look ahead in this update, and we are going through a roller coaster events. Temperatures from near 20 to even 30 below to 30 or more above in the next few days. And what about that holiday forecast? That's coming up in this version of Hutch's Weather. But first, my friends at Robert Gibbons Sons want to let you know that it's time to get that furnace cleaned and checked. It's going to be working over time. Don't get caught in a bind for only $129. Get that 25 point inspection. Call Robert Gibbons Sons and let them know that Hutch sent you. Temperatures as we head into the evening hours are just brutally cold already in the teens below zero for many areas of central parts of Minnesota and going up towards Winnipeg and Brandon, Manitoba. It's even colder there and that's what's heading down our way. Speaking of wind chill out there, it's unpleasant to say the least and that means it's time for you to have the good old fashioned survival kit in your vehicle with things to stay warm. Hand warmers, those little hand warmers you buy at the uh, hardware store fantastic upgrade to your kit there, there uh in your car make sure you have food and uh all sorts of resources i think my uh computer's so cold it doesn't want to show you what's going on with these wind chills all right let's talk seven day forecast right quick and show you the roller coaster the next two mornings brutally cold out there dangerously cold we have a cold air warning for parts of the northern valley and a cold air advisories elsewhere now temperatures will begin rising on sunday but the wind chills will be worse sunday morning thanks to the fact those winds will really start ripping from the south those south winds will bring temperatures to a warmer place but after being in the deep freeze for so long that often leads to clouds fog hoar frost and actually just kind of some overall gray and slippery weather on area roads so keep that in mind even though it looks nice there could be areas that get very slippery then another shot of snow going through thursday and as we head into that week before the christmas holiday what can you expect as you go through a couple of things to keep in mind we're going to take a peek at the uh, extended forecast but we're going to do so with a look from above the national view so you can see the storm track now that we get the this Arctic air setting in place. See these blue lines here? That's the center of a cold air mass. Watch it dive south, all the way south. And then these storms will continue to run along the leading edge and the boundary between the cold and the warm or warmer air, I should say, that will be out to the west. And anywhere just west of the Rocky Mountains Continental Divide, the temperatures can be amazingly different. We can go from 30 below on one side to 50 or 60 above on the other side of the Continental Divide. Let's set this into motion. You can see the storm track, and we're gonna take this out in time here just a little bit. What you're gonna notice is your Saturday storm sweeping through the Central Plains and making snow all the way out to the Ohio River Valley. Then this cold high pressure system moves in, this cold core of air. Watch how far south it goes as we go into Sunday, all the way down to the Gulf of of Mexico, we're going to see some ridiculously cold air working its way into the southeastern United States. Now, the ground down here is very warm, so these cold Arctic air masses do modify as they make their way south. After that, here's your next chance of snow, Canada, working its way through on Tuesday, the central plains of the prairie uh, provinces. Then as we head into your, uh, your Thursday, here goes another one, but this one could bring some mixed weather as we enjoy that warm-up I was showing you on the seven-day forecast, and behind it is our next chance of what could be meaningful snow and wind. Look at that wind. Them isobars are so close together, they'd be kissing. So that means they're going to get moved to the front of the classroom. Got to watch that now. Take a look. So, so some windy weather and some snowy potential. You cannot really put too much weight on this. It's so far out there as far as the exact track of that system, but certainly a stormier path. Then as we head in towards the Christmas holiday, what we will notice here in the travel days leading up to it, is that we're going to see a more flat pattern to those upper level winds, meaning more fast moving systems kind of rumbling through the region. So here we go. Uh, there is Christmas Eve, cold high pressure settling into the northern plains on this European model and moving into the Great Lakes region with stormier weather out in the Rocky Mountain West as we head into and through Christmas Day itself. Now that's a pretty good system right after Christmas on the 26th by the morning. This system here could bring ice and snow to the eastern third of the United States along with some strong, maybe even 
well, severe weather when we get the kind of air masses we're talking about here heading into the day after Christmas. Now, here's a look at the American model real quickly. It shows a similar pattern as we go through. And here is our next chance of some snowier weather making its way through on the 17th. But that is a little farther north with its track of this system on the American model as compared to the European model. Now, but otherwise, we see this progressive pattern, fast moving storms right east to west, right across Canada. And then boom, as we head toward the week of Christmas, we see a storm system making its way quickly through the Great Lakes and the north nor'easter states up here in the northeast. And then after it, as we head into Christmas Eve, quieter weather briefly with a Colorado low developing out there. And then the Central Plains seeing a wave of energy from that on the 26th and 27th. So both models say we should keep our eyes on things in the Rocky Mountain West on Christmas and then afterwards it could be inclement or unsettled weather working its way into the eastern third of the nation after that. Okay, we're heading our way into some dangerous cold territory here in the northern plains. Let's get to the details and what you can expect as you start your weekend off here with Hutch's weather. Two things to keep in mind. Number one, bitter cold actual air temperatures near 20 below to 25 below. Wind chills could be approaching on Saturday morning. A few in the 40s below zero. Snow working its way through South Dakota and Montana. You're not done yet, Montana with reports of over a foot in the Billings area. There's more on the way tomorrow from Glasgow straight through southeast Montana. And look at this, southwest parts of North Dakota. And then it slides diagonally through South Dakota from the Black Hills right into Sioux Falls. There'll be some measurable snow. Travel along I-29 as we go through the late hours on Saturday could be compromised with some slippery roads. Keep that in mind. High temperatures stay below zero. That means we're below zero for over 24 hours, going on 36 hours, and it lasts into Sunday morning with 15 below. Check out these wind chills. Saturday morning, wind chills approaching 50 below zero up near the international border near Botno, Devil's Lake. No picnic there. You'll want blankets for sure sure in Grand Forks because we have 38 degrees. Again, the survival kit has got to have something in it should your car's motor die and you're left trying to figure out how to stay warm until help arrives. So make sure you have candles, matches, things to light those candles, blankets, mittens, and some food for everyone involved. Sunday morning, even worse with the increase of wind speeds, wind chills here could approach 40 to 50 degrees below and a few spots colder than that into the overnight hours between Saturday night and Sunday morning. Those south winds, though, begin that warming trend as we head into Sunday afternoon. We're back up above zero and on our way to those 30s with some fog, patchy fog, frost, hoar frost. You know what I'm talking about. That frost just accumulates on the frozen surface of our decks and sidewalks and even roads can become still very icy in those conditions Tuesday and Wednesday. After that, there's that next weather wiggle. I'll keep my eyes on that, but it does look like measurable snow in our region. The precise track remains questionable. Hey, Hutch's Weather, there is an app for that. Did you know that you can search Hutch's Weather in the App Store today or pay attention right at the end of the broadcast? I'll have some links for you on the screen, so get your pencils out. But I did want to point out that on Hutch's Weather app, whether you're out and about this weekend, you can get all all the latest details for your location. Let it track your location even when you're not using the app so that if you venture into a place where there's a warning, you're going to know about it first. Not only that, Hutch's Weather app is the only app in the region that give you early alerts before sometimes even warnings are issued for things like lightning moving into your area or twisting storms. So keep it with you. My friends at OK Tire Report, they have that road report for us for winter travel conditions. And it's not just for North Dakota. You click on that, pick your state, pick your province in the Northern Plains and get the very latest information on where the roads are icy and where they're dicey. Pro tip here is to hit the hamburger or the menu bar here when you get there and turn the cameras on for the North Dakota page here. And you can see with your own eyes, the ice that's taking place out there and the snow that's taking place as well. And if you happen to be in Montana, just click on the old MT and you can see that roads out there have been a little on the unpleasant side for sure. As we zoom out, we've got roads that are black and red showing severe travel conditions as we get up into the northern part of the state there and out toward the Rocky Mountains. Glasgow, we have an asterisk there. Usually those are no good. And if you click on it, it'll tell you the road is blocked 
from obstructions. A stalled semi blocking the eastbound lane up there of U.S. Highway 2 near Glasgow, Montana. As we look up in the northeast part of the state, no good, and it's going to stay no good through the overnight hours. And if we looked out towards Billings, reports of one foot of snow in that area. As you go down a little bit close, north of Roundup here, we do have the chain laws required out there in the great state of Montana. Did you know you can get all of that by downloading the Hutch's Weather app? Thanks for watching. Thanks for your trust in your weather information. And most importantly, stay safe and stay warm out there. Throw another log on the fire, another dog on the bed, and watch out. Don't stick your tongue to no flagpoles out there the next couple of days because don't even do it. No double dog dares. Don't let anybody tell you to do it. Just don't do it. I might speak. From experience. This has been a Hutch's weather update with Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Wait, you forgot the new app. You're right! Don't forget to download our new app.